And we're back on this Saturday morning, Sports Medicine Weekly. Our website is sportsmedicineweekly.com. I'm Steve Cashel. Joined this week by Dr. Charles Bush Joseph, orthopedic surgeon, former head team physician with the Chicago White Sox, still works with the White Sox, and you went to spring training uh, this year. How was spring training, by the way? Colder than usual? Colder than usual, a little wetter than usual. So the people in Arizona were actually happy with that, but... Steve, spring training is always a blast. I mean, how can you not like it? it? You know, you're getting out of winter in Chicago. We had a tough winter, and you know, you're seeing guys playing. The grass is green. It's all good. Absolutely. So, Doctor Chuck filling in for my usual co-host, Doctor Brian Cole. And time now for our staple of the show, our Ask the Doctor segment. Very simple, folks. If you've got a topic you want us to consider discussing, or if you've got an exact question, specific question for. Uh, Dr. Cole, Dr. Chuck, or any of the doctors that sit in from time to time for Dr. Cole, please go to our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com. Click on the uh, homepage there, and on the right side of the homepage, underneath the picture of Dr. Cole and I, you'll see our Ask the Doctor link, and you can ask the questions. And here we go. i got a couple good ones here for you, Doc. What is the difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis? You know, see, that's a it's a good question, and a lot of patients ask that because they really want to know when they're having joint problems, and the doctor tells them that you have arthritis. Arthritis is a generic term, and arthritis just means yes, I either have an inflammation or a wearing out of a joint. So we break it down two ways: an autoimmune type of arthritis, like a rheumatoid or psoriatic arthritis or lupus. Those are man, those are problems of the joint where your autoimmune function is off a little bit, and you're attacking your own joints. And so really that's more of a biologic problem. Whereas we think that osteoarthritis, for the most part, there's some, there's some biologic characteristics to it, but it's more of a mechanical problem. I may have injured my knee when I was younger. I had ligament damage and the joint eventually wore out because my cartilage wore out. So the, the treatment approaches are different. You know, certainly with the osteoarthritis, it's all about uh, weight reduction and exercise and flexibility. Whereas in patients who have the autoimmune forms of arthritis, it's really a matter of controlling that inflammation. And sometimes that means modulating the body's immune system. So when you see all those commercials on TV nowadays for drugs like Humira and such, uh, those are actually modulating your immune system and, and trying to stop your own autoimmune system from attacking your joints. So the end is the same. You know, if my joint is destroyed, uh, either by autoimmune or by some mechanical process, uh, we want to minimize that, but we attack it from two different ways. Interesting stuff. All right, I got another one here. Uh, this is from Jenny in Highland Park. Is there a vitamin, Doc, that increases lung capacity? Uh, you know, I tell Jenny I wish there was, but uh, unfortunately they're not. You know, our inherent lung capacity, like many of our physical characteristics, do have genetic basis and origin. What you do see is that we rarely maximize our genetic lung capacity, and you maximize it with, obviously, training. Uh, Training, fitness, weight control. Obviously, somebody who's carrying an extra 25 pounds doesn't have that same expansile quality to their abdomen and their chest wall to allow them to have that, quote, vital capacity or that that inspiration, expiration. Uh, So there's really, you can't make it better than what, what, what God gave you, but you can certainly maximize what you do have by training. Now, if you've got lung disease where I've been a longtime smoker or have had chronic congestion problems or chronic lung inflammation, that's where you see patients on a variety of medications, either what we call bronchodilators, which is very common we use for asthmatics, or, or some types of steroids or even immune diseases you see for patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So if you don't have intrinsic lung disease like COPD or asthma, then it really comes down to training, weight control, and fitness. All righty. My final Ask the Doctor question comes from yours truly here. I want to talk a little bit about, earlier in the show, I mentioned that Dr. Chuck, sitting next to me, had shoulder surgery. Um, how long ago? January? Uh, it, was, it was the end of January, Steve. Okay. I'm and still worth thinking about it, though. February 19th, I had... Uh, surgery performed by Dr. Brian Cole, uh, kind of a clean out, but it was the tenodesis, right? A biceps tenodesis. Biceps tenodesis, all right, and where they basically cut the uh, biceps tendon and reattach the humerus bone, also with a bone spur and some uh, arthritis. So um, I'm doing very well with it. Can't wait to get on the golf course. But I want to ask, between your surgery, which was a 
a replacement of the right shoulder, right? Compared to mine and the tenodesis, what are the differences in, uh, in tr- uh, treatment maybe in the PT and the physical therapy coming back? You know, Steve, it really comes down to two elements. And, and while we think whether somebody has open surgery like I did where actually incisions are made or arthroscopic surgery, really the difference comes into play where muscles attached and detached. If a muscle is, has to be detached off the bone, like in my case the subscapularis was, or in your case the biceps, and subsequently reattached, that first six weeks is critical to get that muscle tendon unit healed back to the bone. Now, if, if you just had a pure shoulder arthroscopy and a pure clean-out or removal of bone spurs, those patients, we can rehab them much more aggressively, much quicker. But both of us had in common that muscles have to heal back to bone, and so that first six, eight weeks is critical. And that's where you got to listen to your doctor's instructions, and, and you have to follow the guidelines of your physical therapist. But once you get to that point of tendon bone healing, whether it be rotator cuff or biceps or subscapularis in my case, then it's go time. Then your doctor, your therapist, you want to regain that full range of motion so that by 12 weeks, I've got good bone healing, I've got a good range of motion, I've got light strength, and now between weeks 12 and 18, I'm accelerating for power and fitness in my sporting activity. Interesting. and But I still have... Uh... The pain at night. You know, I had it before, obviously, but the reason I got the surgery, that goes away eventually, right? But again, for the first four to six weeks, you're going to have that night pain in case I roll over on my right side. Is that typical? You know, Steve, that's something we try to warn all our patients on. And that's what really separates shoulder patients from knee patients or or wrist or hand or even back surgery. I had it too, Steve. The first four to six weeks, I didn't sleep well and, and sometimes didn't sleep at all. And unfortunately, it's very common with whether it be arthroscopic or even open shoulder surgery, we always prepare our patients. You're going to sleep in a reclining chair, a lazy boy, or you're going to have 10 pillows behind you in bed, and you just don't find that restless or that restful position. Uh, So uh, it's generally by the time your motion is back and by the time you've got that muscle tendon healing, around that six to eight week time frame, that's when most people start to say, you know, I'm sleeping through the night now. And after not sleeping for four or five weeks, you really know it and you appreciate it. All right. Sometimes I go to PT, the physical therapy, uh, like two or three times a week, and they'll ice it at the end. But do I ever want to put heat on it or do I want to get heat on it to get it mobile, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm able to be mobile? I mean, you mentioned, you know, in the shower, a hot shower to really get that thing moving. I mean, so when is it? My big question is heat versus ice. You know, Steve, we've had this conversation over the treatment of athletic injuries, whether it be overuse acute for a long time. And, and, and over the years, I've said on this show, is that if you want to warm up before you work something out. So, so generally, uh, the therapist is going to allow you to warm up with some hot packs, or in my case, a hot shower, or even for me, a steam bath. And I really, that kind of gets the blood flowing. It warms up the muscle, warms up the soft tissues, even the healing scar tissues. And then I can work out and stretch out. And then after my workout is, and then I'm going to ice down. So the usual rule of thumb is warm up, stretch out, workout, ice down. Okay, interesting. And finally, um, for our Little League pitchers out there, all right, I want to ask you, take me to the major league level because you're one of the uh, team physicians for the Chicago White Sox. You were head team physician for a long time. Uh, The players that are going to start the MLB season, okay? You know, what's the, what's the word on these pitchers and even the players? I mean, and then we're, our little leaguers are starting now and our high school guys. Any, any take-homes for our parents out there? Well, I just want to, you know, give our parents and, and our, 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 our youth coaches, you know, when you see our, our major league pitchers, it's taking them four to eight weeks to ramp up. And when they're starting, even the first games are starting back in spring training and, and mid-early March, They were only throwing two or three innings at most. They were never throwing more than 30, 40 pitches. So your youth, uh, your youth pitchers, the same thing. You got to gradually, as we say in the major league baseball, stretch them out. And that's something that takes uh, several months. And so we don't see our major professionals, uh, starters really getting to a seven or eight or even nine inning game, rare as it is these days, until well into the season. So don't expect your athletes to be mid-season form in that first couple of weeks, especially when it's cold. Make sure that they have a longer warm-up when it's still chilly out. These April games, sometimes we can have some very chilly evenings. 
uh, and it's critical to make sure they're well warmed up before they even get think, thinking about getting on the mound. I'm going to have to take a look at this, but were there, I'm sure there were no hitters, right, or perfect games early in April, right, when the season just started. But that has changed because, I mean, are you guys instructing your pitchers for the White Sox and Major League doctors and trainers that we're not going nine innings no matter how well we're doing? Uh, early in the year, absolutely. We, we've okay. got everybody on a virtual pitch count. We may say an absolute number of 70, 80, or 90, but for the most part, no. We're not going to let them overextend even if they start to feel really good about themselves just because it is dangerous. I mean, when you look at talents like what we have for the Cubs and the White Sox, they are very, very valuable assets that we have to protect. Absolutely. Great stuff. Dr. Charles Bush Joseph filling in this week for Dr. Brian Cole, actually uh, the last couple weeks. So, Dr. Chuck, thanks so much for your time and coming in, and uh, you always do a wonderful job. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Always a pleasure. All righty. Well, our producer, Shane Reardon. Many thanks to Shane for his great work. Our coordinating producer, Teresa Ann Seeger. Also want to thank David Cole for managing our website and our business operations. And then there's Samantha Smith from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. For Dr. Chuck Bush Joseph filling in this week for Dr. Brian Cole, I'm Steve Cashel. Dr. Cole back with us next week. Another edition of Sports Medicine Weekly up next here on 670 The Score. Early odds with Joe Ostrowski. Have a great rest of your Saturday, everybody. Have a great weekend. Take care. Talk to you again next week.